Hey guys, welcome to another video of my dog sculpting series in ZBrush. I hope you have watched my previous videos of this series and if you haven't watched then I request you to watch those videos first and then watch this for a better understanding. Uh, so in the previous videos I have showed you uh, how to create uh, a character from a base mesh and uh, almost I have blocked out the primary for forms in the previous videos and in this video I'll take it further to refining my sculpt and adding a pose so that my dog looks peeling. I was thinking of doing a quadruped sculpt uh, from a very uh, long time but was very much confused about what to sculpt. Uh, so I finally decided to sculpt a dog uh, because I think dogs are a great subject to a quadruped series. So. Uh, this will be the last video of my zebra sculpt and in the next video I'll be taking this mesh in Maya and showing you guys that how to create fur in Maya using Xgen. Also I'd like to talk about that how I created this uh, project or how I uh, thought of creating this project. So uh, because I was very much used to uh, create uh, character human characters so I initially collected a lot of references from the internet and observed uh, many uh, puppies uh, in real life and uh, many videos of them uh, because I wanted to gather uh, complete knowledge of my subject uh, before executing it on uh, ZBrush. And uh, uh, I also never did any quadruped before so I was pretty nervous uh, creating it from a sphere. Also another aspect of creating it from a sphere was that I also want to know the challenges that one can face in doing a quadruped because I, as I have told you that uh, I'm pretty much comfortable in creating human anatomy or human faces so it, it doesn't take me uh, too much time to create uh, a human character or a human face from a sphere but it almost took me around an hour to uh, create the basic uh, blocking of uh, my uh, dog's complete body. So as you can see that I'm now uh, just uh, refining my uh, rest of the body part. I'm also uh, bringing on, uh, out the body part which is which were not uh, previously visible. And uh, in this video my attempt will be to make it uh, as much uh, as appealing that uh, so that in the end of the video it, uh, it gives it gives a good feel it uh, it should look good from uh, all the possible angles so i'm just creating a sharp cut for my uh, anatomy so that my uh, bones and my uh, muscles uh, will be uh, clearly visible although i'm not uh, concentrate, uh, concentrating much on the uh, details because behind the fur i don't think that will be uh, too much uh, it will be uh, visible but still i'll add some basic primary and secondary form that even without the sculpt uh, my dog looks convincing So in the last video, my uh, uh, my character was looking uh, uh, quite bulky. So I have refined it from almost all uh, the uh, all the angles, and now it is looking quite slim. So I never wanted to sculpt an adult dog. I wanted to create a mid-sized puppy. So I am pretty much convinced uh, with my shape that yes, this is this was the character which I thought before creating and and uh, yes I'm pretty much satisfied with my result rest how it goes please tell me in the comment how do you like it so 
so just adding a little separation between the nose because there is no fur on the nose so the nose is the only part which i think uh, is the most visible and very clearly uh, visible in the uh, dog so i'm just treating in hard outline also my eyes looking very out so with the help of move brush and just adjusting my cavity according to my eyeball making it look good from the lower angle as well and whenever i uh, i think that i should change my uh, shape of my character or whenever i think i want to move uh, my mesh so i bring it uh, to a slight lower subdivision so that i i can easily move it so now you can see that i'm on uh, my third subdivision so that i can easily move my mesh because whenever you are on a higher subdivision the geometry becomes very stiff very hard to move A little, a little bit adjusting it from the front. Again, I have switched to my highest subdivision because now I am going to add some forms. Because I want little bit variation in my dog's body. I do not want to look it flat from all the angles. So once my sculpt gets completed here in ZBrush, I will just take the lowest subdivision to Maya and then I'll start uh, creating fur in Maya. So this will, this will be my last uh, uh, video of my ZBrush uh, sculpt. So as you can see that uh, my rest of the body is looking very uh, flat, like it has no uh, details. So I do not want that, so that's why I'm creating some wrinkles on the neck, so that uh, it should go give a feel uh, like my dog has some loose skin uh, on his neck. using my standard brush to create uh, wrinkles of uh, various uh, sizes and it means I am just adding some variations to my wrinkles also going to add uh, some muscles to my uh, shoulders
I also request you people to please uh, follow me on my other social uh, social media website where I'll be uploading the high resolution renders like uh, uh, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook I'll add the links in the description So I've just added a slight visibility of my bones on my belly. It becomes really uh, fun to sculpt anything in ZBrush once you get comfortable with the interface of ZBrush. Like uh, in the starting, ZBrush might uh, look like that it is a very complex software, it is very hard to learn. But once you start learning it, once uh, you give time to the software, uh, then uh, very soon uh, you get to know the basis of the software and then uh, you'll see that you can handle the software very uh, nice and easy. So I'm just working on a few variations of my body because I do not want my character to be of uh, same uh, smoothness all over so few minutes before I had no uh, the secondary forms but now um, I have added wrinkles to my neck I have added anatomy to my whole body and now I'm adding wrinkles to my mouth And since I know that after adding fur, all these wrinkles will be hidden, but still I want my uh, dog to look convincing even without fur. Just adjusting the depth of my eye. Now I'm going to sculpt uh, a few details on my nose because there will be no fur on my nose. So, fur, uh, sorry, uh, my nose will be clearly uh, visible. So, that is why I'm going to add some bump to my nose so for uh, creating this bump i haven't used any external brush i've just used a, a normal standard brush and uh, the basic brush alpha which is available inside zbrush So adding few uh, outlines to my wrinkles so that 
uh, it looks good now sculpting the inside part of my uh, forearm So now I'm working on the back of my character. So I feel uh, that uh, the quadruped anatomy and the human anatomy is somewhat similar in uh, some ways. Only the difference which I feel is that uh, our spine is perpendicular to the ground. and uh, a quadruped spine is parallel to the ground the rest of the thing i feel that it is quite the same so it doesn't take uh, you much time if uh, uh, you know the human anatomy it will take less time to uh, uh, for you to learn a uh, uh, quadruped anatomy and i'm not saying that all the quadrupeds have the same anatomy but uh, many uh, creatures you will see that uh, they share the same anatomy So now I can see a lot of variations on uh, my, my dog's body. So. I'm just working on uh, the back hop. So now I think that these much details will be enough uh, for this character, and uh, maybe in a few moments I'll start uh, to add a pose so that my dog. I do not want my dog uh, to be standing in the same regular pose. I want to render uh, render it out in a uh, in a very cute pose. So I think I'll make him sit on the ground. Uh, with holding some a uh, rose in his mouth and having wearing a hat on his head because i have seen many references in which uh, uh, very uh, uh, small puppies they are holding a uh, uh, rose in their mouth and they are looking very uh, pretty and uh, very romantic so i also want my this cute little dog to behave the same way bringing on some uh, mouth uh,
now i'm going to add a pose uh, with the help of transpose master and it's a very nice tool where you can uh, where zbrush allows you to uh, sculpt your character in, with full detailing and then it will let you uh, switch to your lower subdivision and very easily you can uh, create a uh, dynamic pose for your uh, character or creatures so here you can see that i have kept a reference of a puppy sitting on the ground so i'm just uh, trying to replicate the same pose here and in this i'll be using only masking and the, the transpose line where i'll be rotating and i'll be moving my mesh so that my uh, i can control my mesh in a very easy easy form So I think it is going to take some time for me to add a pose. And the great thing, uh, great thing about transpose master is that once <clears throat> you are done with your uh, um, mesh uh, and. Uh, when you'll come out of this transform master all your other supports will get back to their initial positions so this is a very uh, nice thing about transform master you won't have to initially uh, place all your supports to their respective positions So I'm just uh, bringing out uh, the back part. Uh, and this pose I'll be using as a blend shape. Means I'll be creating uh, dogs for. Uh, with that regular pose in which we have sculpted the dog and uh, then I'll use this pose as a uh, blend shape and uh, you will see in my uh, later videos that all my fur will also be uh, shifted to my this pose. So I do not want my uh, leg to go inside my front down. Also, I'm just going to give, I'm just trying to give a curl to my tail. And I do not want my arms to be parallel to each other, so that's why I have masked my uh, front arms and now I'm going to uh, add a pose in my arms as well. Mm. I want 
down to slightly uh, go outside of the LME. So uh, I have add uh, this get them closer here. From behind, it is with uh, looking uh, it is very outside from behind, so I'm just bringing them inside. Uh, so, this uh, part of uh, the video means uh, giving a pose to your character will also it, it also takes uh, a decent amount of time. So I do not want my dogs to look in front. So I want them to look slightly up. Checking out the volume, you know, no part of my character has got pinched. I think the back has started uh, to look a bit uh, pinched here. So I'm just adding some roundness here. Just moving it out. As you can see, that again and again, I'm masking different, different. Uh, uh, different parts of my uh, character. Sometimes I'm create. Uh, sometimes I'm masking uh, the back portion. Sometimes I'm masking uh, the front portion. So uh, the the point uh, which I want to make clear that uh, uh, when you're using Transpose Master, uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to create a pose because uh, this is not a rigged character. Uh, uh, once your character gets rigged, it is very easy to uh, change uh, the shape uh, in a very easy form because that part of your body is uh, uh, is binded to a uh, basic skeleton. But here we do not have any skeleton, so that's why uh, you'll have to use a lot of masking here. So just pushing my uh, back foot slightly in and bringing them inside. And I think the body is uh, very much stretched. So I think I have to rectify it. And according to my body, my uh, foot are looking very small. So I will just push my body uh, inside yeah. because apparently it is looking very stretched. So I am just bringing it inside.
so again checking my uh, complete body that it is not losing any volume from uh, from anywhere now i'm just masking my and uh, bringing my uh, front paw slightly inside and they are outwards to each other smoothing out the surface now I, uh, I have masked my jaw and uh, my uh, my uh, intention is to close its mouth because in the end I want him to hold the rose Uh, focusing on closing his mouth Sometimes it's really get tricky to control your geometry. Like you can see that uh, it is slightly uh, getting hard for me to close its mouth. From side it is looking uh, nice, but from front you can see that my mouth is. Uh, Highly open. So I have closed my mouth, but now I think uh, that the shape of my mouth is not looking that good. So I'm just going a few steps back.
just bringing my body inside. Adding some clay and uh, trying to uh, remove the pinchness from the body. just came out from the transpose master and uh, my rest of the sub tools also went to their, uh, to their respective positions and once you have uh, completed your transpose master means once you have completed your pose, your pose you will uh, find that few of the details get lost so uh, those details you have to uh, slightly work on those details. I'm just adding some uh, bump to my uh, mouth. Now I think that my uh, dog is looking uh, much cuter than it was uh, in his uh, regular pose. Now I think it is look uh, it is looking much better. Shaking some wrinkles and uh, uh, again working on some volumes. Uh, there are few details that uh, that have lost their volumes, so I'm just using a basic cement brush and uh, again bringing those circular in nature I means circular in form so this is the most uh, pinched area adding uh, very minute wrinkles here because whenever you will see that there is a collision collision means you can see that my uh, foot and my belly they are very uh, much closer to each other they are uh, they are in close contact so it will create a slight a uh, very small wrinkle here so i'm just uh, sculpting the wrinkle
I think that's enough for this part. If you think these videos were helpful to you, so please spare some time to like, share, and comment, and also please subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another part. Bye.